But 1995 is also the 50th anniversary of the New York debut of an American pianist who has devoted a large part of his career to playing music by Gabriel Fauré. He's Grant Johannesson, and he has done us the great honor of dropping by our Studio 4A for a little visit today. Hello, Mr. Johannesson. We're delighted to welcome you to Studio 4A, and you're going to be playing 4A. Touché. <laughs> I have a picture here, uh, Mr. Johannesson, of uh, you 50 years ago when you were about to be making your, uh, your New York debut at Town Hall. Um, That's the curse of having a 50th anniversary. You have to look at old, old photographs. Well, you are quite a handsome man then. You are still quite a handsome man, but um, when you walked out onto the stage there in Town Hall for that uh, first recital 50 years ago, did you see it as the beginning of a long career? What, what were Not your, at all. What were your hopes? I think I saw it as, uh, as sort of gratis ad parnassum, steps on the way, hopefully, to whatever would happen. But I think, you know, I didn't have the feeling, and I still don't have that feeling of, um, of aspiring to um, what they call a mega star today. And back 40 years ago, we just called them stars if they were totally outside of the norm. I've always felt very much in the way that Darius Mio say he, he felt about music. He didn't care whether they liked his music. He said it was simply coming out of me, and that's all there was. I needed to express myself, and uh, he said I simply went ahead and did it. Uh, Mr. Johannesson, you have uh, always been, it seems, attracted to uh, parts of the literature, the keyboard literature, that some might consider a bit off the beaten path. How do you think, Mr. Johannesson, your career might have been different had you stuck closer to the the beaten path, the mainstream? I, I don't think it would have. I don't think I would have stuck closer to it. I was never anxious to learn certain works that are sort of standard. Mephisto waltzes, and um, I've played my share. I made my debut at the age of 14 with the Liszt E flat concerto, but I, I much preferred to play a different repertoire later on. Well, what about uh, this next composer, uh, speaking of being a bit off the beaten path, Deodata Severach. Uh, I know him for a couple of uh, wonderful, very flavorful pieces. One I think is called En Vacances, uh, on vacation. Children's um, pieces, yeah. Right. Uh, what can you tell us about Monsieur Seville? Well, he, um, he wrote a very beautiful piece which um, his compatriot Ricardo Vinas, who was, you know, the favorite pianist of many of the composers, Debussy wrote his Poisson d'Or for him. Poulenc studied with Vinas. Vinas played this piece I'm going to play for you. It was a rare piece at the um, one of the commemorative um, things that they do in France for the death of Faure. It's called a corner of a cemetery in springtime. Coin de cimetière au printemps. Well, let us hear it now. Uh, a corner of the cemetery in springtime by Deodat de Severac, played here in Studio 4A at National Public Radio by pianist Grant Johannesson.
in a corner of a cemetery in springtime by Deodata Severak, played here in Studio 4A at National Public Radio by pianist Grant Johannesson. Thank you, sir, very much. That's a very That's evocative... Great. Yes, very atmospheric piece. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, today is the 150th anniversary of the birth of Gabriel Fauré. He was born on the 12th of May in 1845. Um, Mr. Johannesson, you have played a lot of Fauré. I wonder what you make of uh, these two words that are sometimes used to describe Fauré in, in some of the music books. Civilized passion. I, I rather think that uh, the two words... Um well, certainly they might meet on happy ground, but uh, I think, first of all, uh, music really, uh, whether it's Beethoven or, or Schumann or Pierre Boulez, needs to be listened to without thinking about words at all. I think his music is passionate, yes. It, uh, the the words I've always grew up with um, describing for his music is that it was, as you say, civilized, sensitive, sensible, marvelous um, construction. But the thing that is so terribly interesting to me is that his music, he lived a long life, and his music went from one kind of music into another and into a phase at the end which nowadays people think he he was the most uh, revolutionary harmonist in, up until modern times. He that's died a, in 24. That's a very interesting point. If he was born in 1845, um, Chopin was still very much alive and writing, uh, writing his kind of music, and he lived through the the era of, of Schumann and Brahms and, and Berlioz. Berlioz and Mahler and Debussy and Ravel and yes he he sort of it's hard to uh, the, one of these two pieces I'm going to play for you uh, is a very good example of his music as it was growing into much more uh, complicated harmony it's hard music to uh, memorize as a result his music uh, in that middle and late period is um, quicksilvery and yet it, he always lands on his feet so beautifully, you know. Well, Foray has always been one of my favorite composers, and he never wrote a symphony. He wrote, what, one opera. Uh, he, he primarily wrote in small forms, uh, chamber music, piano pieces, uh, songs. Do you think that he wrote these small pieces because he felt most comfortable in, in small I th forms? I think or? he was, yes. He could, you know, he could open up huge vistas with his music mm -hmm. without having to... One, one of his uh, biographers said he, his music is of a high intensity, but it's on a background of calm. Hmm. It's not a bad description of his music. Well, you say you're going to play two pieces for us. What's the first one you're going to play? Well, one of his f earliest pieces is a, is a romance, romance without words, romance sans parole. It's a, a good example of uh, what the next uh, period of his life would produce, because I'll go from that to the fifth Barcarolle, which was, uh, we'll say one is opus 17, the other is opus 66. Now, he, his last music was roughly 120, about 120. So he, and he lived until he was 74. Unfortunately, the last 20 years of his life were very hard on him because he couldn't hear properly. Well, let's hear these two pieces uh, right now, Romance Without Words and uh, the fifth of the Barcarolles. Music by Gabriel Fauré, played in Studio 4A, here at National Public Radio by pianist Grant Johannesson. <laughs>
two pieces by Gabriel Fauré, uh, Romance Without Words, and then uh, after that, one of the Barcarolles, the Barcarolle number no. 5, played here in Studio 4A at National Public Radio by pianist Grant Johannesson. You know, Mr. Uh, Johannesson, um, Barcarolles often conjure up the image of a Venetian gondola song, something sort of gentle and rocking, and uh, <coughs> yes, that piece uh, had a, an element of that, but it was also... Yes, it's a, it's a much more uh, oceanic Barcarolle. Mm -hmm. It uh, it really is. It's um, uh, Corto once said it was it was the story of Antony and Cleopatra on the barge. It uh, it's a, a kind of an emotional surging Barcarolle. He wrote thirteen in all. It was a it was a f rhythm, a form of rhythm that he loved, and really those Barcarolles are are fascinating to study because they. They all are quite different. The early ones uh, sound a little more like lagoon music, you know. It was very rhythmic. The second one was just... You know, that sounds like oars being pulled on the body. But always with a, a subtle... Um, cross rhythm in his music. Foray was uh, born 150 years ago today, on the 12th of May, 1845, and thank you very much, Mr. Johannesson, for helping us celebrate uh, today. It's a pleasure. Um, but there are other uh, big anniversaries in, in your life as well. Again, uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of your first uh, recital in New York's Town Hall, and uh, shortly you are going to be um, turning 74 years old. What what does music mean to you now, uh, and and has it has that evolved over the last well, it 50 means years? What I hope the public can get from someone like myself is um, the expression of music that I'd like to, uh, not just the sort of wowing the public things like that. I think there are plenty of people who do that anyway, and I'm as you know, my repertoire doesn't always lean toward that repertoire, so. I mean, I respect it, but um, I'd like my own style to be appreciated. That's all. I, I, I feel that I have something to say musically, and uh, I'd like to feel that I've arrived at a point where I can express myself without having to worry about it. You have done just that, and thank you so much for joining us today uh, to play uh some of your favorites, Schumann and uh, Severac and Gabriel Fauré. Grant Johannesson, thanks very much. Thank you. That conversation with Grant Johannesson was produced by Steve Zakar and digitally edited by Penny Hain. Our engineer was Mark Greenhouse. Gabriel Fauré, born 150 years ago today. In the year 1908, he wrote a letter to his son Philippe in which he said, For me... Music exists to elevate us as far as possible above everyday existence. The artist should love life and show us that life is beautiful. Without the artist, we might doubt it. Performance today is supported by NPR member stations and National Public Radio. Contributors include the Charles E. Culpepper Foundation, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, supporting creativity and innovation in the arts, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Martin Goldsmith. This is NPR's performance today.